All right, we're now going to talk about meteors, meteoroids, and meteorites. These are all the same beast, it's just their location. So, if you've ever been outside at night and you've seen a shooting star, that's the common name for what scientists call a meteor. Okay. And what happens is, here's the Earth, here's our atmosphere, remember, we're not drawn to scale, is in space, there's all kinds of tiny pieces. Think of it like pieces of sand grain. Most of them are actually quite small. Well, when that sand grain enters the atmosphere, so actually all these pieces that are floating out in space, we call them meteoroids. So meteoroids are pieces of sand and dust that are floating around out in space. And remember, the Earth is orbiting, and we're orbiting at a very high rate of speed, like 30,000 miles an hour. So if they're just sitting there, we're still going to hit them at a very high rate of speed. When they hit the atmosphere at that rate of speed, the friction with the atmosphere immediately heats them up to thousands of degrees, which means they give off visible light. And so it's a meteor when in the atmosphere. And that's when you see it as a streak across the sky. Then, if it makes it all the way to the Earth, makes it through the atmosphere all the way to the Earth, gets on the ground, it's called a meteorite. Yeah. So, meteorite is whenever it's on the Earth. And you can go pick up the rock. In fact, I have a collection of chunks of meteorites. I'll show it to you. So, all these are chunks of rock that have fallen from space. Now, the company that sold this to me made money off this. So they got a whole bunch of meteorites, and then they cut them into little pieces and made these collections, and they sold each of the collections so they could make a lot of money. In fact, there's a whole uh, industry of selling meteorites. They make them into jewelry, and if you have a large one, it can be worth a lot. We're talking tens to $50,000 if you have a big meteorite. If you have really tiny ones, then they're usually only on the hundred, few hundred dollar ones. I bought this for a few hundred dollars, this collection of meteorites. The nice thing about it is they actually, it's been authenticated. See, they gave me an actual authenticated certificate. They tell me exactly where each of the meteorites came from, which was kind of cool, and what the different kinds are. Okay? Now we see similar kinds of meteorites like we see with the asteroid. We see some stony ones, we see some metal ones. We also have a few other bizarre ones, too, that uh, we're not going to go into this class as a whole. Um, you can spend a lot of time studying different meteorites. But when they enter our atmosphere, we see them as meteors. They look like this. So let's look at this one here. Lots of times, they'll come in and they'll get hot, and then they'll blow up. They'll kind of Why? Because if there was any moisture or anything in there, or even just the pressure of heating up can make them break apart. And that's what you'll see is these bright spots on the end. You see this flashing across here? That's a satellite that happened to go by in the same picture. Here's one, too, where it gets real bright and flashes in the end like that. All right. When we see a meteor shower, then that means we're seeing a whole bunch of particles all coming from the same place. And because of that, because of our perspective, it's kind of like when you look at train tracks. If you look at train tracks, in the distance they seem to come together, right? But it's just your perspective. Same thing with meteors all coming from a certain region in space. They all seem to come from a certain point in space. So let's talk about meteor showers. And why meteor showers occur pretty much at the same time every year. Well, it's because here's the sun. Here's the Earth going around the sun. Most meteor showers are associated with comets. So a comet comes by, all this material melts off the comet, right? Well, that material is still orbiting the sun. So even though the comet may be out here, there's little pieces of dust and sand grain and stuff all along its orbit. Because every time it goes around, it melts, this material comes off, but this still keeps orbiting the sun. So all those little particles are still orbiting the sun. And then every time the Earth runs into that location in its 
orbit, all of a sudden there's going to be a whole bunch of pieces of sand, but boom, you're going to get meteor showers all over, or meteors coming in all different directions, and that's how you get a meteor shower. And the Earth always gets back to that same spot in its orbit at the same time. So the Earth, when it's always there, which is pretty much the same time every year, will have a meteor shower. Like one of the most famous is around August 12th every summer. It's called the Perseids. So all the meteors, if you see, if I draw a line backwards from all these meteors, they all seem to come from a point in the sky right there. We call that point the radiant. Okay. This is the same thing here, but this is the, we're a long way from the radiant. If you draw all these backwards, the radiant's going to be way over at a position over here. This is Orion, actually, right here. But you see, they all seem to be coming from the same direction in the sky. Those are what's called meteor showers. And meteor showers happen yearly. Now, the biggest problem with meteor showers is if the moon's really bright, then you don't see much. And so if it happens to be a round full moon, it's not a good time to go see a meteor shower. All right, this is the Perseid meteor shower. The radiant is right here in the constellation of Perseus, and that's what we named the shower after, is what constellation the radiant seems to be in. And this is a chart of the known meteor showers that happen every year. If you look here, the best ones are actually in the winter. The quadrantid, which is way up here, it's 100 and some, this is per hour, so it's about 120 per hour, which means you're seeing about two meteors per minute, which is really good. The other one that's really good is the geminid right here, it peaks around the December 13th, 14th, right in here, right after you're done with finals. Um, and it also gets up to about 100 per hour. However, most people in the winter say, oh, it's too cold, they don't go sit outside at night and look for meteors. But in the summer, you don't mind doing that. It's like, oh, let's just hang out all night and watch a meteor shower. That's why the most famous one in the summer is this Perseid one. You see it actually extends for quite a while, meaning the stream is kind of wide. Um, so we hit it in our orbit for a significant amount of time. But it peaks around the 12th, around right here, um, every August 12th or so. So as long as there isn't a moon, a bright moon at the time, it's a good time to go out and look. You'll see about one a minute or so if you're away from all city lights, nice and dark, and you don't have any trees or anything blocking, you can look up and see the whole sky. And the best thing is you don't need a telescope, you don't need anything, you just lay out there on a lawn chair and just watch the sky. And you'll see these meteors. Okay? There's other ones that are interesting, like the Leonids, I'm going to tell you about. Look, at it. it's only a, really about 20 per hour. However, every once in a while this becomes spectacular. Why? Because the comet that goes by, it's called Temple Tuttle, the comet comes by every 33 years. So right after the comet comes by, it melts again, leaves a whole bunch of new stuff, and this one that's 20 per hour can often jump up to thousands per hour, and instead of a meteor shower, we call it a meteor storm. It doesn't happen that often, but occasionally it does, and when it does, it's very spectacular. So this is a wood carving from 1833, when the Leonid meteor shower occurred, and it was so bright they said they were estimating, nobody knew back then, that they were estimating it was probably about 10,000 per hour of these meteors. They said it was so bright, raining everywhere, no matter where you look, you'd see 100 meteors. And you could read a book by the brightness of the meteors. It would have been very spectacular. In fact, it was so spectacular especially on the east coast of the United States, that's where everybody was living at the time in 1833, that people were waking up all their neighbors, come look, come look, and they thought it was the end of the world. You know, they thought it was some kind of prophecy being fulfilled from the book of Revelation, and everybody thought the world was going to end, and a whole bunch of religions sprung up around this time, all saying that the world was going to end and predicting when the end of the world was going to occur after this 1833 shower. Now the thing about it, when you have these storms like this, this meteor storm, it only lasts for a short time. I mean, it lasted for about an hour, and that was about it. So you kind of also had to be in the right spot on the Earth. It wasn't seen by everybody all around the Earth. The people over in Asia and stuff didn't see it because they were on the wrong side of the Earth. So let's talk about that real quick, too. When's the best time to view meteors? Well, you got to remember, here's the Earth. We're rotating counterclockwise. Let's put the sun up here, right? So this side is daylight up here, and this is where it's nighttime down here. Well, you might think the best time, remember Earth is spinning this way, is this is sunset here, so this is 6 p.m. over here. This is 6 a.m. here. This is midnight down here. 
we've done this before, right? So you know where all these are. All I did is rotate it. We usually have the sun on the right. I just rotate it up. But if you go out and it's dark here, like at 8 or 9 p.m., are you going to see many meteors? Not many. Why? Because the Earth is moving this way in its orbit. So you don't see as many before midnight. It's kind of like trying to look at rain out your back window of your car. Well, if you're moving forward, all the rain's in the front, but you don't see much rain on the back window because the rain can't come around and catch up to your car because you're moving too fast. Same thing here. So the best time to view meteor showers is when we're, we're over here, and then the Earth is running into all these particles that are in front of it in its orbit. So the best time to view meteors is usually after midnight, but usually about 3 or 4 in the morning. Okay? Once you get close to sunrise, then it's, you lose it because the sky starts to get bright. So typically, the best time is after midnight, but before sunrise. Now it does vary because it depends on where the radiant is, because that's where the particles come from. If the radiant is very far north, close to a circumpolar object, right, like the Draconians, which are named after Draco, then it doesn't matter as much because the particles are actually coming at an angle like this, and so it doesn't really matter where you are, it just has to be dark. But for typical meteors, it's better early in the morning than late at night. All right, here's a meteorite, picture of a meteorite. Most meteorites are very heavy in iron and nickel content. If you go pick them up, you're like, whoa, that's really heavy, and a magnet will stick to them. In fact, that's one of the quick ways to test to see if you have a meteorite. Is if you go find a rock, you go, well, this looks like a meteorite. If, it doesn't, if, if it's not magnetic, a metal uh, magnet does not stick to it, it's probably not magnetic. Okay? 